It's actually very good at picking out the $2 coins from trashy areas. And there's a heck of a lot of $2 coins in this park here. So if you feel like digging a few holes, you could come away with $30 or $40 worth of coins if you spend an hour or two. And also a good idea to check the beaches. This is a lovely beach access here, especially after a storm. We'll go and check it out now. Now there's a lot of places around here that we're just not allowed to go. We're supposed to keep off the dunes. You can probably see that sign there it says help prevent erosion, keep off the sand dunes. But I know for a fact that there's a lot of old coins and they're in pretty good condition there because the sand is very neutral and preserves them very well over hundreds of years. So if you do get a coin around this area, you can bet your boots that it's pretty good condition and it could be extremely old. Now, we've just come here after a storm, but there's no big changes. But sometimes you can find pockets of items, gold items, and no beach cuts. The idea is to zigzag the area and just see. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you can't tell if there are pockets around. When you're out on the beach, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, a little hot spot right there, pointing up to where those kids are in the hole. If you look carefully, you'll see, there's actually a small spot where a lot of the heavy stuff are gathering. So theoretically, the heavy items should be right about there. maybe a little bit deeper into the water. I'll have a look around this area and see. We're out on this beautiful beach today doing a bit of metal detecting and first target, come and have a look. not very heavy but that's nine karat gold it's a good start we'll have a look around in this general area because it could be a little pocket here and we're getting a lot of targets so see what happens sometimes when you're out metal detecting you'll find these really old items they're broken that's an old gold locket I can tell because it's not green Nine karat gold stays reasonably in good condition over the years, but that's broken. Not very heavy, but it could be a good sign that there's better items around. If that was brass, that would be completely green and probably deteriorated beyond recognition. So we'll just keep going and see what else we find. Oh. Okay, second target, take a look. Found a little pocket where all the heaviest items are gathering. So we'll just keep going and see if we can find a gold ring in the mix. We are off to one of the islands off the Queensland coast of Australia called Maclay Island. This is one of the many islands where holiday makers come to escape the rat race and enjoy the many features here. We are here to enjoy the island and do some treasure hunting in places where they would otherwise be lost forever. However, we have learned from experience to keep our minds open as you can never tell where the next great find will come from. 
first thing we do when we get there is to have a little look around and see if there might be any good detecting spots. Know that 18 carat jewellery or higher will stay in the ground for hundreds of years in pristine condition, just waiting to be dug up. Now we're only here for a day, so this is a very short day trip and, most of the and we have to quickly here, work out where well off, the best and most likely spots here, are. Well off. That's where they go and spend their money. And I don't doubt that underneath those boardwalks are a lot of coins, possibly rings, possibly rings there in the white sand. And I dare say if you find something, it'd be quite significant. However, this doesn't guarantee success. Sometimes treasure hunting is just a matter of trial and error. But you can be sure of one thing, there is definitely going to be some surprises. No cracks in the floorboard? I was wrong. There is. Check this out. That's daylight through there. People lose their stuff and it'll drop straight down into the shallow water. The tide is now out, so it's a good time to have a little look around. There's a tide. There, look. One dollar. Someone's emptied their pocket out. Yeah, you got the point of you do. I'm getting eaten alive. Same here. We'll have to get going. So we have to work fast. Finding a pocket of coins is rare but always a delight and is a good reason oh. to always check for more targets in the same hole. They're everywhere. And besides, there just might be something far more valuable. Is that it? I thought I heard more than that. We have learned from experience that people lose their rings when playing a sport, playing with a dog, or even their own children. And quite often, they never know where they've lost it or have an opportunity to ever see it again. Anyway, we're going to keep going here. There's a massive coin spill. No doubt there's rings and stuff here lost as well. But we're getting eaten alive by mozzies. So... They're brand new, look at them. Yeah. There's just heaps of them here. Every single one is a coin. Uh, we are getting literally eaten alive. Mozzies everywhere. Coins too. And wouldn't you know it, the only thing we forgot to bring on this trip was a can of Aragard or mosquito repellent. I'm getting a bit across. Fill up these holes. Flip. Yeah, we found it. Are you getting any interference? No, it's the metal. From here, from here. Calm down. With this detector you can't tell how deep the target is simply by the sound or the tone or even the volume. But it will show you on the display of the detector itself. That's definitely a signal. Found it a 10 cents. Oh! Thanks to maybe a dollar. Jesus Christ. There's heaps of them down here. Yeah, I found a massive coin spill, guys. But I'm getting eaten alive. Tone just had one on his wrist. We've got to get going soon. What's that? 15, 20 bucks pretty quick, though. 
Beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep. There has been times in the past where I've lost gold nuggets Whee! simply because I was impatient. Find it. Where is it? In that pile. <laughs> it wasn't a coin. What was it? It's an old lock. Is it up? Not much good. I ain't got the key. <laughs> Just put that in my pocket. Finally, we get lucky. Put the point out. Oh, cool. We got what we're after. No, I don't gold. Is that gold or white gold or silver? There's always a certain amount of luck Can't in tell. treasure hunting. Have they have a proper look at it? Okay, we'll see what else we can find. I'm going to try along the shoreline on the low tide to see what items may have washed up. If I start to get heavier items like fishing sinkers, then I know I'm on the right track to find the heavier gold items. like we're getting some coins by the water's edge. I bet you if we keep going we'll end up finding a ring. We'll see what happens. We just come here after a storm. It's really windy. I'm getting signals everywhere. Got a real deep signal here. I'll just show you what it is on camera. I know that Darren's actually found the gold ring. I'll show you that later but come and check this out. As you can see, it's very dry conditions. And we've got a rare earth magnet here. Just put that on the ground. As you can see, it's picking up the dirt. If you try to balance a metal detector on this dry dirt, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Unless the detector is specifically designed for gold bearing dirt. You'll never balance on this, it's just too dry and too heavily mineralized. But anyway, in the quartz reefs, this may or may not be a quartz reef, any gold that's shed will end up down there. Simply because it's heavier and it will always rest on the lowest spot. So if you're looking for gold pieces, Especially the nice rounded pieces. Check out the gullies. Apparently, unless the metal detector is specifically designed for heavily mineralized soil, the the field just bounces off the surface. 
round the outside of the river bends you'll get concentrations of gravel or alluvium you'll also get some light stuff cans a bit of rubbish very small pieces of gold amongst the gravel and wash as you can imagine, the streams downward from those gold fields are also highly mineralized and much of the wildlife and plants have tried to adapt over the millions of years to the difficult ground conditions. I'll just give you a look at this. You can see that all the pieces of stone are worn and well rounded over the millions of years and that is exactly what happens to the gold pieces. Even though gold comes out of the ground or out of the reef embedded in quartz, over time this quartz is broken or worn off through the streams and the actions of the water and weather. Here are those rare earth magnets I was talking about before. The mineralization in these streams can be off the chart and balancing a metal detector in these areas can be extremely difficult to say the least. Coupled with the fact that you usually only get really small pieces in these streams, you can however overcome most of these problems by using a good metal detector with a very small search coil. Again, if you try to balance a metal detector in this type of ground, you're going to have a lot of trouble. And some metal detectors can cope, or have been specifically designed to cope. Just thought I'd show you a bit of the bush track. It's quite pretty here, it's beautiful and warm. Cicadas everywhere. Goannas, koalas in the tree, snakes on the ground, where the quartz reefs are, where they shed the gold is pretty much unknown because these streams can run for miles. Not many plants or creatures can adapt to the heavy mineralization of these areas, but the ones that do are often extremely unique. If you look carefully, you will see a very rare inhabitant of this area. I know it is rare because I spent many hours searching and I could only find one. Apparently that's a canal open to a, a lot of housing estates. And a lot of rings and coins have been traveling down and depositing around here, around the shoreline and around the back of the rocks. Now. I'm going to go around the back of the rocks there and have a look. This time I hope to find a nice gold ring. Another place to look out for is around the back of the rocks. If you have a look over here, a lot of rings and heavy things sit around the back of the rocks. All you've got to do is come here on the low tide and you'll find them. This is where the gold rings and coins are often found. Not long ago, Darren found a 22 carat Asian gold ring right on this watermark. The condition of the coins found often indicate how old the area is or how long people have been losing their That's a objects very, for. very old two dollar coin that. Worth cleaning up that. 
there should be some rings around here. Along these areas where the rocks are, around the back of them and around the low tide mark, you'll find some heavy rings and things like that. Other objects on top of the rocks you'll find are small sinkers, they get lost by the fishermen. They tend to sit in the little cracks or hollows of the rocks and are very hard to get out. Rings will often sit just on top of the mud layer and are very easy to retrieve. Gold rings will give off a big signal here because most of them are actually sitting on top of rock and there's a very very small surface of mud. One of the things you learn about treasure hunting is that it's not a good idea to waste too much time on likely bad signals. If you come across a target in, inside the rocks like that you can be rest pretty much assured that it's a sinker. The sinkers sort of rest in the little holes and you can't pick them out. Rings are pretty easy to pick out of these areas so it's not a ring we'll just keep going. The odds of finding a ring I think are around 20 or 30 to 1. But if you go to the right spot and be patient, your day will usually be rewarded with something very nice and valuable. Anyhow, it's time to show you another spot worthy there's of There's a little spot over technique. here where there's what looks to be gemstones. Let's see if we can find it. Now this rock's a good example of what I call a conglomerate. On the gold fields you'll find this will all be gold and these will be chunks of quartz stuck in the gold. So. That's a good example of conglomerate. Mind you, if you found a nugget that big, there's no way you'd be able to carry it. It'd be just too heavy. A lot of the times, the heavier objects get washed up amongst the rocks. Now you do find lots of targets among these rocks, but they're very hard to retrieve. There's also lots of nasties that hang around these rocks as well, like sea snakes. There are beaches in Melbourne, Australia, where you can collect jarfuls of sapphires, rubies, garnets, and in quite high concentration. Now I'm not exactly too. sure if these really are gemstones or not. There's little purple ones, red ones. But there's some, also some very interesting things you'll find in rock pools. Have a look at this. Here is another reason why it pays to keep a careful look around you. Let's just go and have a look what's up. Anyhow, back to treasure hunting and some great finds coming up next. What have we been finding out here? Uh, looking for a gold necklace, lady ladylock. Found a silver bracelet, silver bangles, two silver bangles, the same thing. Um, what else? An handful of old things, a lot of rubbish. Just love found a gold necklace. Um, found all this so far, a lot of rubbish. So I'll drop that yeah, the surf, surf's been pretty harsh lately. A lot of people have been losing stuff. There you go, this is the sort of stuff I'm finding. 
Pretty sure that earring's gold. There's a button. And then two bracelets look like they've been here for a while, bangles. Um, and they're silver. They register silver. So pretty sure that earring's gold. Still haven't found a gold necklace, but it's probably out here to find a gold necklace. Are those headphones waterproof? Yeah, yeah, no, the whole thing is. It does look right, this detector, up to about 10 inches with good discrimination, so I can't, I don't even need a shovel. It's too difficult. This is your feet, you think you're down like this, like you're going for hippies, and you feel it, and you dig it out. You found a set of hat, hat. Sorry, you found a set of sunglasses yesterday by using your feet. Yeah, well. I was just there in a low spot, just using my feet, digging around, I felt all the shells and the rocks and all that sort of stuff. I swear I felt a gold necklace push up against my feet. I went down to pick it up, and it was a $300 pair of glasses. I put that up on the pitch up too, um, but that was in Malula, but not here in Clandra. Cool. We'll keep going and see what we can find. Hey? We'll keep going and see what else we can find. That's it. Right, we've had heaps of people reporting who lost uh, bracelets and watches and glasses and rings and uh, we've got a good signal here guys check this out it's been really rough surf lately A bit deeper than I thought. Bingo. All right, that's either white, gold or silver. But I know there's been some yellow gold stuff lost this morning, so we'll just keep going and see what we can get. Good find, but. Holy mackerel. stamps on it for the visuals but uh I see yellow coming through the back here which is uh where all the scratches um and yeah that's what happens with white gold 18 carat or like 9 carat yeah it loses it's heavy the, loses the rhodium plating yeah. grip of five Where's diamonds miss yeah she's like whatever <laughs> holy mackerel that's got some